Hey everyone, wanted to shoot a quick video just highlighting some of the performance modifications that I've made to my 2.7 liter uh, Ford Bronco. I've had a couple people ask about it. I have an active thread over on the Bronco 6G forums kind of highlighting everything that I've done, uh, things that I plan to do, etc. So um, I guess the question is why build a fast Ford Bronco? Well, why not? I mean, it's an off-road vehicle that I can pretty much go anywhere. So why not make it a little bit more uh, exciting to drive? The tune that comes from Ford on the 2.7 is kind of lethargic. It really is a very sleepy tune. It, it makes the 2.7 look slow in the Bronco in comparison to what's in the F-150. So this, what I've done thus far really has uh, really woken the Bronco up and I'll kind of go into detail what I've done thus far. All right, so first up, I did install the engine cold air intake. This alone, you know, while they do provide, or engine provides some dyno charts and whatnot, I can't say that this really did much as far as improve my zero to 60 time um, in the stock format. Um, it does increase mid-range power, I've noticed, torque and HP, uh, but better than that, it does make a lot of cool turbo noises. You got a direct path there to the filter, and the noise of this thing makes is crazy. Uh, between this and this, it's just a bunch of air rushing in and it makes a lot of noise so I actually really like it it sounds pretty cool pretty different uh, than what it did stock so um, I got a great deal on this one so I went ahead and installed it and I really like it, it took about two hours to install uh, wasn't the easiest install in the world but it was worth it in my opinion the second upgrade I did was the turbo smart compact blow off valve this is the vent to atmosphere model this uh, blows right out here uh, whenever you let off the gas it makes that psh noise um, it does supposedly increase throttle response. It does, you know, hold boost better when you start increasing it. Uh, I, I mean, I can't really speak to any of that, but I went ahead and grabbed it since I got a good deal on it. And uh, the plan is to do a custom tune on this Bronco in the future, so it's definitely not going to hurt. Um, okay, so next upgrade was the Ford ProCal. So this is the Ford Performance tune that you can buy. You know, uh, Lethal Performance usually has them on sale for around 600 bucks. Uh, during holiday sales, etc. This is a great upgrade. If, if you are looking for more performance for your Bronco, this is probably what I would do absolutely the first thing I'd do. Um, not only does it add about 30 or so horsepower and about 20 foot-pounds of torque, um, it really helps with the transmission shifting strategies, uh, and better yet, it helps with torque management. If you own a Bronco, whether it's a 2.3, 2.7, you know first gear is a slug. The torque management in first gear is just insane. This thing just can't get out of its own way in first gear. Obviously, Ford did it so they would, you know, people wouldn't break drivetrain components, etc. You know, it's a rock crawler, desert runner, not a uh, street racer, right? So people, people at Ford did a great job at making it conservative, but it just feels very lazy off the line. So with this, it will feel a lot better in first gear. However, if you're looking for better zero to sixty times and quarter miles, if you have a Sasquatch with the four seven gearing, you need to be launching a second gear uh, in manual mode and then throw it automatic. That's gonna be your best, you're gonna get your best times with all that. Um, anyways, this adds about one and a half, two pounds of boost or so. Um, I noticed the stock Bronco pulls about 18-ish pounds of boost. With this, it's about 20. Um, obviously that's at lower RPMs and it starts to taper off as you increase the RPMs. Uh, next up, I did the race chip. This is the Model S. This is a piggyback tuner. This is just the base model. It's a little over 200 bucks. Um, it's just going to give you a little bit more oomph um, on top of the ProCal. Nothing too aggressive, uh, but it actually complements it very nicely. I don't, there's five settings on that. So there's um, the, f the fifth setting is the, the highest performance setting. Right now, it's only on the third setting. I've tried four and five, and with the current configuration, it just doesn't feel any faster. It doesn't really run any better. So I stuck with three. Three runs good. It feels really strong. It idles a little rough, but we have a fix for that. So we'll be talking about that here shortly. Uh, but again, this is kind of like a hacky solution to get more performance until HP tuners and SCT finally unlock the ECMs on these things. Uh, but anyways, I did pick up some spark plugs. I bought these directly from ZFG Racing. They're probably one of the best EcoBoost tuners, uh, specifically for the uh, Explorer STs. They, they, they tune the fastest Explorer STs in the world. Most of them, not most of them, but some of them are running 10.6s, mid 10s, etc. I mean, they're, they know what they're doing. Uh, the 2.7 isn't that much different than the 3.0. So I trust these guys when, uh, with what they 
with, with what they know. And so they made the re recommendation for EcoBoost vehicles to install these plugs. They're the NGK LTR7BHX, the 95605s. These are one step colder than stock. Uh, and they're also pre-gapped to 0 0.028, which is the recommended gap for a uh, modified EcoBoost. So I'll be installing these to see if it clears up the rough idle a little bit and then see if I can get more power with the race chip set to setting five. Um, I also have another piggyback tuner coming in. I'm going to be removing the race chip and installing the Edge Performance Pulsar XT, which is a more aggressive piggyback tuner, and seeing what that does on top of the ProCal and then by itself. I'm going to be doing a review by itself uh, and then with the ProCal to see how it all works and how it performs. Um, I do have a BMS or Berger Motorsports um, pedal tuner inside the vehicle to help with throttle response. There has been no exhaust upgrades. It's a stock exhaust. I do plan on doing a cap back, a three inch cap back uh, here in the next couple of weeks to see if that improves um, performance as well. Um, no plans for downpipes right now, maybe custom tune doing downpipes. But I do have a CVF intercooler coming. Um, that's actually going to be installed in two days. I'm a buddy coming over. We're going to put it in. Um, and see how that does. IATs, or, or what Ford calls ACTs, um, getting kind of high. Today was about 75 degrees in January, which is crazy, but it's, uh, IATs were pushing, you know, 115, 120. They were, they were kind of high, so I'm hoping, or that was IAT2, so I'm hoping the intercooler drops those down so I can keep the performance uh, without heat soak. So um, I'm going to be installing that CVF intercooler in the next couple of days. I am actually an affiliate with those guys. So I'll leave an affiliate link in the description. If you want to save 30 bucks on the intercooler, you can just type in my code and bam, save 30 bucks on an intercooler. Uh, but we will be doing some pretty detailed testing on that, showing before and after uh, ACT uh, measurements, et cetera, kind of showing what the, uh, what the benefit of having an intercooler on a modified Bronco is. Um, but I think that's it. One other thing I would quickly mention is that um, stock performance on this. We'll do some zero to 60 and some quarter miles. Um, just with like an SMB, you know, like a K&N style cone filter, I was running about 6.5 zero to 60 with 93 octane. Uh, again, that's launching second gear sport mode, advanced track off um, and doing about 6.5 and about 14.8 in the quarter mile. Not exactly super fast, right? Pretty quick for an off-roader, but not exactly uh, blazing the trails here. Um, with just the Ford Performance Tune, you can drop that 6.5 to about 5.7 um, or even 5.6. I've had it go 5.6, but that was with the engine intake and the blow-off valve. I've had to do about 5.6, which is impressive. Um, and that translates into like a low 14 uh, in the quarter mile. Now with the race chip installed on setting 3, I actually got it to go 5.32, 0 to 60, and the quarter mile in uh, 13.8. So that was the eighth mile is about 8.7. So those are really impressive times for, you know, a 5,000 pound truck that, you know, is meant for rock crawling and jumping and, and uh, just, you know, front and rear lockers, you know, off-roading with the best of them, right? So pretty impressive times. I'm hoping with the Pulsar I can get, you know, low fives, maybe drop off a couple maybe tenths of a second or so in the quarter. I don't know. It's going to be more aggressive, so I'm hoping it does better with these plugs as well. I'll probably do an E30, uh, probably fill a tank up with some E30 and see if that helps too. So anyways, it's going to be fun. We're going to see what this Bronco can do from a performance uh, perspective. Um, so stay tuned. If you if you, if you you like this kind of content, there's not many people doing performance content on the Bronco right now, so I figured what the heck, I'm going to just start the channel and, um, and go over some of these products and show you my results. So um, so go ahead and get subscribed if you want to follow along, but I'll be doing an update video here shortly showing the difference with the plugs and then talking about the intercooler and the benefits of that. So, all right. Thanks for checking out the video. We'll see you soon.